Hello and welcome to the next module uh, working with healthcare environment, government influence, and of course government reform. You have a lot of very good resources, uh, YouTube video, a couple of YouTube videos, and some other materials that I have assigned for you to read uh, that kind of talk about the government regulation and the influence um, on uh, on healthcare IT specifically. What I'd like to do is take you back to 2009 when the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act was uh, was signed into law by President Obama. Now, keep in mind that this act was was initiated by President Bush and then taken on by President Obama when he came into office. And it was really meant as a holistic uh, healing for the company that was in a, uh, for the country that was in the midst of a recession at the time. Of course, the housing market crashed and a few other things, uh, some large banks that uh, had failed. So there was a lot that was going on. But in this uh, this act, was what was called the High Tech Act. And the High Tech Act provided for $19.2 billion in federal funding uh, to advance um, healthcare IT. Now, it also provided for the creation of the Office of the National Coordinator, um, Office of Civil Rights, and a few other things as well. But I wanna take you back to that 2009 because I was working at Cerner at the time and it was a complete mad rush between uh, software vendors, and software consulting co uh, companies that were working to help these healthcare organizations. It was a little bit different than what the government uh, typically does. And providing these funds for hospitals to implement uh, electronic records, they did something that was a little bit different. Instead of giving the hospitals the money to purchase these, uh, these systems, what they did was they mandated uh, through something called meaningful use that hospitals had to achieve a degree of meaningful use and there were three phases initially or three stages so that they could prove that they were actually using these electronic medical records. Now if a hospital or a health care organization or a covered entity provided the documentation and provided the uh, information that was necessary they then received a bonus from Medicare and Medicaid and as you may already know uh, most of the hospital's income revenue, uh, 60 to 75 percent of the hospital's uh, revenue, comes from Medicare and Medicaid. So this was a huge bonus uh, for hospitals. However, you still had the same uh, issue as you do in healthcare: is that there are a few early adopters, and those are the ones who are either already on their way to using these electronic medical records, or they're very excited about doing that because they want those Medicare, Medicaid uh, reimbursement bonus dollars. And you also have the healthcare facilities that are more reticent, that will kind of sit back and wait for things to happen. Now, they weren't penalized initially for not meeting meaningful use, if you count the fact that they were just reimbursed normally. Um, but the thing is, is that as meaningful use went through and as uh, hospitals implemented these records and provided that, the first bonuses were like 2% of Medicare and Medicaid. And then the next round of bonuses were 1%. And then as it went along, those uh, bonuses got less and less to the point where there were no bonuses, to the point where there are penalties for not having meaningful use of electronic medical uh, records and electronic health records. Now, keep in mind, this is not just um, the uh, 5,500 hospitals that are out there. We're also including uh, critical access hospitals, as well as other uh, organizations that were um, that were part of this or uh, would benefit by having these electronic medical records and electronic health records. Uh, Cerner, where I was working at the time, exploded. Uh, we had a, a big hiring uh, that uh, went on. We had a lot of innovation that was going on because we still needed to be the best uh, of the uh, choices that were out there. And we also needed to make sure that we met the requirements uh, of a certified EHR. And that was another thing that was provided for was that it wasn't just, uh, you know, implement a system. It had to be a system that was, quote unquote, certified uh, by the government as being a viable system that provided a little bit of, um, of certainty for uh, healthcare organizations when they were doing making their purchasing decisions because they were buying or purchasing a hospital that had met the certification criteria. Uh, the certification criteria was a moving target. So what uh, met the needs for certification in one year uh, didn't mean that you met the next year. You would have to constantly recertify uh, to maintain compliance with this. So again, this is kind of the wild, wild west um, back in 2009. Uh, over the years, there have been some mergers and consolidations 
Uh, Siemens was eventually purchased by Cerner. Um, Cerner also has uh, a footprint now in England. I think that they also have a VA contract. So there's a lot of consolidation that happened over the years, uh, over the last 10 years or so, uh, as well as, um, you know, a, a growth in the industry. And as a result of that, you'll see a lot more of physician order entry or provider order entry, uh, where the physicians are actually putting the orders into the computer and a lot less of transcription errors, um, a lot less document, paper documentation. But there are still some out there. There are ambulatory centers out there that still even today are using paper systems. And even though I would think or I would hope at this point in time that uh, almost everybody would be on an electronic uh, medical record, uh, that's not that's simply not the case uh, there still are some stragglers out there so uh, in your um, in your career you may actually be asked to assist with the implementation of an electronic medical record because wherever you end up working is still on paper documentation anyhow that kind of does it for uh, today uh, you do have quite a bit of material to go over there's a lot I'm not expecting you to be an expert on this, um, on government influence and reform, but certainly to understand it and to uh, to recognize uh, the influence that government does have on uh, healthcare, as well as the um, influence that uh, state agencies have on healthcare as well. Um, please read your materials, uh, review this lecture, and um, and have a great great day. Bye.